Welcome to Microsoft 365 UK user group. Uh, thank you for uh, being here with us today uh, on the uh, April edition. And so we have about, uh, about 70 odd uh, attendees uh, registered for today's event. So uh, really appreciate that for taking your time out and being here. So thanks for that. Uh, the event is being recorded uh, and obviously uh, the slides together with this recording will be made available uh, this Friday. And so uh, in the meantime, for the next two hours, uh, if you can also perhaps maybe post your questions on the uh, top right uh, in the Q&A window uh, for uh, our two guest speakers. And obviously, if you if you don't want to show your identity, you can still post questions uh, anonymously as well. So uh, hopefully uh, you can try and get more out of the, uh, the event. Um, we have got two great speakers uh, who actively drive the effort in the community uh, in Microsoft 365 Teams uh, space. Uh, so we have, uh, first of all, uh, with us today, Thomas Gullis, uh, who's from Austria, who will be talking about Microsoft Teams, uh, the, the all things uh, customizations around uh, Microsoft Teams. So we'll we'll go to uh, Thomas uh, in a short, little, short while. We'll then take a break uh, around 5 p.m. UK time for 10 minutes, uh, and then we'll be joined by uh, Nut Ralbemo uh, from uh, Norway, so who will be talking all things about uh, Microsoft Viva. So that's our agenda. Um, for those of you who are, uh, who are not uh, aware uh, of me, uh, I'm Chirag Patel. Uh, I'm the uh, organizer and the host for Microsoft 365 UK user group, and uh, I tend to run this uh, event uh, uh, on a monthly basis, uh, mainly in the middle of uh, the month on Wednesdays. Uh, I'm a Microsoft 365 consultant uh, with Patel Consulting based here in the UK, delivering uh, Microsoft 365 secure collaboration and information management together with productivity solutions, so using Teams, Yammer, uh, Power Platform, and, and so forth. So generally tend to get my hands dirty, uh, you know, with deployments, migrations, uh, and also various workload implementations around that. I'm also a Microsoft MVP, uh, which basically just means that I uh, speak at uh, quite a lot of events uh, and also organizing and just where possible, being able to share uh, what I come across and, and learn from others uh, as well as other speakers. So I've been around for about 20 odd years, uh, covering various uh, uh, technology spaces, mainly within Microsoft, but really started with SharePoint uh, originally uh, with that. So uh, that's a bit about me. And you can connect to me on techchirag.com and uh, through the Twitter and LinkedIn handles uh, there as well. So just before going uh, over to our sessions, uh, for those of you, uh, some of you have registered. Uh, for those of you who haven't, we've got the uh, next month's event already planned, uh, which is on the 19th of May. Uh, and we've got, again, their great community speakers, uh, Hans Brander, who's going to be presenting about the uh, all things OneDrive. Uh, and then we've got four speakers, uh, basically the, the, the PNP, uh, pattern and practices, uh, SharePoint and Teams, uh, Microsoft uh, community crew, uh, who will be basically talking about how to basically bring value to yourselves uh, when you're working with Microsoft 365, SharePoint and other solutions, how to use the open source uh, uh, technologies there. So really looking forward to that uh, next month. And then obviously uh, you've got a few URLs there as well, so meetup.com forward slash M365 UK is the is the meetup site for getting uh, latest for all the events and updates, but also um, you can get access to the slides uh, and the, the URL will be posted in the Q&A uh, soon. But also if you haven't already, uh, then you can head over to YouTube as well and subscribe to uh, M365 UK uh, channel. And so uh, you can hopefully get the, uh, the session recording uh, as well. So hopefully that uh, helps. But also, uh, as I'm always looking for new speakers uh, for variety of contents. So again, you know, techchera.ag forward slash M365 UK CFS. Uh, you can fill in a, a very short form. It doesn't have to be a 50 minute session. It can be half an hour, uh, whatever takes fancy uh, for your topic, your experiences. Uh, and, and I can work with you on that if you're a new speaker as well. So. Uh, please do try and uh, apply and submit your session uh, on that as well. 
So what we have today is, uh, like I mentioned, uh, you know, great sessions and, and Thomas uh, and I, we've kind of bumped in at a few conferences uh, over the years uh, and I follow his blog as well. Uh, you know, some great uh, articles and, you know, very kind of, you know, a four time MVP uh, award holder uh, who started with Office App Services and now does mainly office development uh, around that as well. So the session about Microsoft Teams here and as we all know, in addition to Outlook, we all use Teams uh, on a daily basis, uh, but this is basically taking that to the next level around being able to bring all your other type systems, interfaces through the use of tabs, uh, bots, extensions, uh, and really kind of building with the App Studio to bring all those experiences together. So this session uh, is purely all about that and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and you know, looking for some of these perspectives that Thomas has uh, on offer here. So I guess with that, uh, Thomas, uh, over to you and uh, welcome to M365 UK. OK, let me share my screen. We are on screen three. <laughs> so. Let me start my PowerPoint and then we're good to go. Um, hello and welcome everyone. Um, thanks for Chirac for the organization of today's meetup. Um, I will spend now the next 15 minutes to talk to you about Microsoft Teams, the hub for teamwork as a platform. Hub for teamwork, you probably already heard like a thousand times uh, through the great work of the Microsoft marketing department. Um, today's yeah, priority is more to look at it as a platform um, was the same tagline a couple of years ago, like SharePoint as a platform. Now we transfer our knowledge somehow to, to Teams and look what's possible to integrate all our great third party systems to Teams. Um, this is actually the ego part slide. We're going to skip that just for reference. If you want to reach out, I'm normally doing sessions together with my colleague Stefan, so and I'm way too lazy to update my slides every time just a slide to connect to us um, and let's go into the session. So hello again, that's me. I'm Tommy. Um, yeah, I'm working as a team lead for modern workplace solutions for a company called Solvion and the slide before has all my credentials, but let's go to the topic. Um, teams as a platform. Um, if we think about teams, um, we have a couple of ready to use applications out of the box. We all know this down there, those, uh, yeah, out of the box Microsoft 365 services. Before that, it was called Office 65 with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and all the great stuff coming out of Redmond. And if you look at your Teams store and your administrator actually opened up the Teams store to third party applications, you already have like around 820 uh, solutions out there from great companies like Adobe, Trello, uh, Atlassian with all their products around Tier and Confluence are in the store as well. And what we want to talk about today is how can you as a company or as an ISV get your own solution into the team store and what options actually are available out there to extend teams in certain ways and get a better connected experience of all your services within the modern workplace defined by Microsoft solutions. Um, to do that, we have two basically yeah, high level approaches. Um, as I said already, we talk about two different angles today. The one is where I say, okay, I create a solution that will be only available in my client tenant or in my own tenant. So something for my company, for my department. And there's the other way also that I want to create a solution that should be deployable or distributed to the Teams slash Office Store. So I create a solution and you can go in your App Studio or in your App Store and download my solution. So different focus, different target audience. Um, to be honest, most of the time today, we're talking about solutions that are for my organization. So we talk with clients and they want something for their HR department. We talk with clients and they want something, a sales assistant, for example. So really targeted to uh, enterprise developers. Microsoft, of course, also wants us to create applications in a, in a broader spectrum for the App Store just to get the platform uh, more used and more, yeah, interesting in terms of what's available. 
as I said, many companies already did that, and I know of quite a few startups right at the moment that will take uh, advantage of the, I think it was 115 million daily active users in, in, in Teams at the moment. So this is, of course, a big wave. Everyone tries to ride in somehow. Um, what actually uh, is available for us to create and what tools uh, are used basically to do that? Um, the circle here defines um, what we can create, apps, personal apps, bots, messaging extensions, task modules, connectors, notifications. We will walk through all of those in the demo part. Um, and what are the tools or what is the technology uh, we use um, to create those extensions? Of course, top there, Microsoft Bot Framework. That's basically an SDK that you need to create your bots. So that's something that is not really uh, only a Teams thing. You can create bots also outside of Teams. You have different channels. Teams is just one channel, but of course, it's great that we can make use of what the bot framework uh, team um, deploys and yeah, makes available for us and reuse this technology also in Teams. Um, tabs, personal apps, you normally use just web technologies. I think the icons over there is JavaScript, React, and Angular. Um, in general, everything that can include the Teams SDK, which is a JavaScript library, um, is good to go. I'm using a lot of .NET in the last year because I'm an old .NET guy. I never really jumped over to React in terms of creating big solutions. I can read the code, but yeah, my, my abilities to create new solutions with React are somehow limited in .NET. It's a different game. Um, and I'm using Blazor, for example. Um, no problem. I can sideload the SDK in my Blaze application, can handle authentication, and then my app, my service is available as a tab in Teams. And we will see examples of that. So no problem if you have a Java background, if you have a .NET background, if you have a Node.js background, as long as you have web technologies, you're good to go. Um, somehow special, uh, SharePoint Framework. That's very, very interesting for all the developers that already have experience in creating SPFX, Japan Framework Solutions. Um, there is an easy way to just surface your SPFX solution also in Teams. Remember, SharePoint and Teams are both core services of Microsoft 365, and Teams basically just reuses what SharePoint Framework already has there in terms of hosting. Um, a tab, for example, can just point in its manifest technically speaking, to the SharePoint Framework web part and be surfaced in Teams. So you only need to code once. Uh, you need to create a SharePoint Framework web part that's in a special version. I think it is upwards from version 1.7 and we are now at 1.12 of SharePoint Framework. Um, you're able to ask the solution for the context and the framework gives you back, I'm running in SharePoint right now or I'm running in Teams. And with this basic if statement at the beginning of your code, you can then maybe tweak a little bit the UI to make it more Teams aware or more SharePoint aware because the UI is different. But in terms of business logic, in terms of everything that your application does besides of UI, you're good to go to reuse all your code. Of course, you also can integrate Power Platform. You can have your Power Apps with Dataverse instead of Teams. You can create uh, Power Flows or flows actually with Power Automate, sorry for that, um, to integrate data or, or workflows inside of Teams. I think I have a demo where we create a, a short uh, a form that you need to sign uh, or to fill out in order to create a channel in a certain team because none, not all of our teams should be aware that, that every person should create a channel. Some of them need more governance and there's a short form in there and then just a simple a uh, flow that actually takes care of the request and creates a channel after someone says, okay, it's okay to do that. Um, it's a Microsoft slide. Of course, there's GitHub as the repository where we should all store our code bases and with some flows in there, we can also prepare solutions for Teams. And then, of course, Microsoft Graph. Um, as you all know, Microsoft Graph basically is the backend in Microsoft 365. It's not every API is 100% covered right now, but most of them are there. And if you are creating a, a tab, for example, you 
try to acquire a token for the current user. So we have authentication and authorization maybe already done. Then I can just read out or reach out to the Microsoft Graph and say, okay, let's give me the user profile. Let's give me the last 20 emails, the latest documents and all those things the graph has for us. Um, and that's really the, the first thing uh, you should use in terms of interacting with Microsoft 65. And of course, we all use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. It's just web technologies. If you are an Eclipse user or something else, everything works because it's just web technology. Um, what we actually can create uh, as in the slide before, tabs. This is the experience we get when you click on a team and in the middle of the, the large uh, area, you can create your own tab. Uh, bots in terms of conversational AI, those are the tools that you can chat with, that you can have an interaction in a one-on-one -on -one conversation or also in a channel in terms of a group. So add and then the keyword of the bot to get it triggered. Um, notifications, that's very interesting. Um, that's I think still in a, in, a, in a beta endpoint phase, but how to get your own service, a third party application, your AIP system, your CRM system, whatever you use to make your modern workplace uh, complete, could be able to just send a notification to Teams. So the bell icon uh, gets a badge with one there, and this just a notification. So not a bot, but just a notification. Um, then we will see messaging extensions, how you can extend uh, existing messages with, in two ways. One would be that we say, okay, we have, let's say, a message in a channel. We want to reuse the information that's in the message and want to hand over information to a third party system or the other way around. We want to create a message. For example, I will talk to my team about a certain backlog item in our Azure DevOps environment. I can click in the bottom to message extension, search for the set backlog item and get a nice reference in terms of a card. My conversation gets enriched with information of the card. I just say, hey, hey team, have a look at this and that. And there is a hyperlink and then I can everything there. So message extensions in two ways data out of Teams and probably just enrich conversations inside your Teams environment. Um, same thing basically goes for connectors and webhooks. That's a little bit more basic than message extensions, but you can also use a webhook to push data out of Teams in a different system. And we will see uh, a short PowerShell script uh, just to mimic how it works when you want to have just a like a hole into Teams, into where you push data through with a nice adaptive card. And that's basically just a web request that you uh, set up in a different uh, solution. Very, very easy without the need of deploying a bot or a tab or something else, just a card that's get pushed to Teams. Again, Microsoft Graph that backs the entire experience in terms of reaching out to Microsoft 365. And then, as I said before, basically two different main audiences enterprise developers focusing on creating solutions with these artifacts deployed to their own tenant or to their client's tenant, and then ISVs and partners creating solutions that we all can use. Um, important also, of course, the role of, of enterprise administrators, and in terms of teams, uh, we have the availability of different policies, uh, app policies and setup policies, uh, different um, in short, is that uh, an app policy, you can basically define permissions uh, for all your apps in the sense of that you can say, okay, out of the 800 apps in the team store, I trust 10 of my selection. And I say, okay, these 10 apps are available in my tenant as well. Um, that's very important in terms of GDPR. Um, not that those solutions out there are bad or anything, but Basically, if you think of Jira, if you think of Trello, it's just another software as a service product that you can integrate into your existing workplace, and it should be somehow managed and under a certain governance uh, yeah, regime, basically, to make sure that everything is okay and everyone in IT actually knows uh, what tools are used. That's why most of our customers are very careful in allowing different applications. And then we have the app setup. That's basically uh, in the app and the left rating teams in your shortcuts, you can define different policies so that in the, for example, your digital sales assistant is right there 
in the app bar for all your sales members, but not there for your marketing. So app permissions and app setup policies in difference um, how you can manage apps as an administrator. Um, okay, um, what's, what's the idea and, and why uh, hub for teamwork? Um, basically, uh, we want to eliminate that context switching. That's that's one of the main, 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 main issues or or uh, reasons why my teams tries to get all of your of your things inside the Teams client. You see here a lot of different applications, and we, the idea is that most of the time uh, your users should stay in Teams and should get every information, every bit they need inside the Teams client. Um, that's the a great idea. I'm not 100% committed to every user should have everything in there. I do believe that the uh, modern workplace always includes also software outside of Microsoft 365, ERP, CRM systems, uh, different production systems. So this is always uh, a combination of, of multiple systems. And for example, if you just think of a CRM, it doesn't matter if it's Microsoft CRM or Salesforce or, or any other uh, CRM system we can think of. For sure, we don't want to create a CRM system on our own. That's that's for sure. We all or some of us might have been there in the in the SharePoint days where we used SharePoint lists as a database and tried to create service desk applications or mini CRM systems. That's not the way to go. That's that's not something you should really consider as an option. Um, so we have an external system and the idea now is that you use teams in a way of that you say okay of my external system for from for my role for example i'm not a sales guy but i do need to uh, do certain pre-sell tasks but i don't want to open crm to be honest it's it's way too much for me it's a system that i i'm only opening every let's say couple of weeks and then i need some time to to find my way around why not create a short extension in teams that gives me the, the, the tiny piece of data I need to do my work out of the CRM system right inside of Teams. But my sales colleagues, they still have their CRM system. So we don't want to, to get rid of all the expert systems. We just want to get the, the data for special roles inside of Teams so that most of our uh, team members and colleagues can stay inside their Teams context and you only need to switch to certain tools if you really are a subject matter expert, if you really do complicated tasks or complex tasks in the other systems. That's the, the idea or that's how I and, and we at Solvian interpret the current situation with Teams because it doesn't work that you say, okay, we forget everything else and just use Teams. That's that's That didn't work with Outlook, that won't work for Teams. It's just uh, most users maybe have a benefit if we inject certain parts. Okay, one example that we can uh, do is like this animation over here. It's a task module. Basically, um, this, this animation just shows you that you can click on a channel message, click on the ellipsis menu, click for more, and then you open up your task module. And your task module can be created in different ways. It can be just a simple adaptive card, or it can be your own HTML frame where you can basically create your own application there. And then from there, you can take the uh, data and do something in your backend system. So we will see this in a, in a demo later, but that's just like, okay, directly in Teams, one click, more actions, you can go and create. We will see it later, a to-do task or plan a task or service ticket or CM opportunity, whatever is the scope of your solution. And then a uh, very interesting and something that I think Microsoft showed in the Ignite last uh, autumn, I think. It wasn't in the, in the March, it was already a, a half a year ago. Um, I'm just waiting for the animation to start again. You see here, we create a meeting, and then we have three phases. We enter the external application. We have a pre-meeting phase with asking for a certain task to do, then the meeting starts. Then we have an in-meeting phase where we use the application to again align some tasks or, or uh, talk about tasks. And then we have afterwards also the option uh, after the meeting to have our own surface to then talk again about the tasks. And in that case, the application I think is Asana, so an external uh, project management tool that is integrated in our meeting in here. 
again in three different phases before the meeting to set up uh, certain expectations, maybe talk about agenda, who is responsible, who needs to prepare what, then in the meeting to document certain steps, to document tasks, and then post meeting again uh, a few into what was discussed and everything is basically synced to Asana to have everything in a third party system as well. You see here just inside the meetings, a click and you have a, a fixed uh, column to the right of your meeting like you have now for a chat, for example, same window size where you can have your own application in there. And in that case, we're talking about uh, task management can be uh, basically every use case you can think of a bot that makes sense inside of a, of a Teams application. Uh, just to give you an idea, you also can create bots that can listen to audio. So we all maybe have those, and I don't want to say her name because she's, she's sitting on my desk now, these devices from a certain retailer from Seattle where you just call the name and then she does commands. Same idea for tasks and you are uh, a privileged crowd because you speak English and all those systems are way better in English than in my mother tongue in German. They usually, yeah, let's go, no, don't, don't go there. Um, what we also see here is how you can create those solutions. Um, this is actually the Visual Studio uh, extension. It's basically a, a template when you say, okay, new solution, and then you can go there and create your tab or your uh, bot basically the, the wishes to do the tooling. Um, tooling is still yeah, in an early phase. As always, uh, the products uh, get out there and tooling starts to be something for command lines or you need to download some GitHub repos and get started from, from scratch basically. And step by step, they get better. We are now in a stage where we have um, integration into Visual Studio Code and into Visual Studio uh, where you can start with different layouts. And of course, uh, the, the, the guys and, and girls around the PNP crew, they have their own extension methods. If you used to create SharePoint framework solutions, you know uh, the Yeoman generators there, and there's also Yo Teams from, from Victor Whelan, a uh, great solution to get you started with scaffolding projects for uh, node development, for tabs, for bots. I think even an, a, in this solution, a, a tunneling with ng-rock is created. So the community also has tools, but it's nice to see that Microsoft also, yeah, invests their time in making development easier. Um, SharePoint Framework, I think if you work with SharePoint, you know the extension points down there. And of course you can reuse the same technology also in your custom tabs and personal tabs and task modules. Custom tabs and personal apps uh, difference in, in, in the tabs is basically one type is really for one person. So it's a, a static tab that is only available for one user. Uh, and then there are tabs that you can just pin to your channel. So that's available for all your team members. A little bit different uh, in the terms of, of the context, but makes sense to have some parts of the solution available just for a different audience and one just for personal level. Um, and the last one, as mentioned, especially for the a bot framework, there are a lot of samples out there in the GitHub repos, uh, Microsoft forward slash bot builder samples. I think there are close to 60 or, or, or even more uh, samples out there and a lot of them are focused on teams, but again, Bot framework can also talk to different channels, can talk to Facebook or a web chat. So not only Teams, it really, really uh, yeah, makes your life easier if you look at the samples to get started. And I really like to, or I enjoy to see all the samples because it's a great way to get new ideas, what others uh, thought about and think about how you can extend Teams. And with that, it's time to go to the demo part and the rest of the session actually is only in the live system. Um, for that, I'm going to change my camera for a second. And I will open up. Here we go. Uh, this is just uh, an, yeah, a, a demo tenant. I think I'm Wayne Scott here in this tenant. Uh, tenant is really small, just three or five users, but this is basically our our a daily demo tenant uh, because I don't want to show you my, my live data from my, my live working demo or 
in this case today, I'm not connected with my Solvion ID, but my MVP ID, and I, yeah, this tenant also doesn't really have a lot of information, so we stick to the web tenant for now, or the web version of this tenant for now. Um, let's start with a solution here, um, the leads dashboard, um, and this is just a static tab, a personal tab. So you see here on the left-hand side, those are my applications, and one is here leads, and I see here as I said, maybe I need to have an insight into a CRM system. That's why uh, I made the point earlier, lead management system, and I can look at Northwind, Contoso. Uh, yeah, experienced folks on the call know this is the Microsoft naming for, for demo clients. And the idea is that I have one click and see my leads and I don't need to go to, let's say, a CRM system. This implementation, is the static tab, so for me as a person. Um, let's look in the same solution in the team. So I have my project corporation 2020 in there, a couple of tabs up there. Uh, I'm working together in that team with, I think, yeah, Janet, Jessica, and twice myself, although I'm, I'm Wayne right now. Let's go back to the channels here. Um, and here we have our tab for leads. And you see, okay, this is now available, same application uh, to all my colleagues. I can make that aware of, okay, who is the current user and show different uh, tiles here. But the idea is to make the difference between, okay, this dashboard now is available to everyone inside of my channel, inside of my team. This one actually can be only scoped to one user. That's the difference in the applications. And you can do that in a manifest with a, a simple configuration, but of course it takes more effort in terms of development because you need to make your solution aware of the current user and need to behave a little bit different in terms of maybe permissions uh, and maybe a data that you want to present in that case or in the more group oriented case over here. The interesting part with that solution is, and let me just jump over to the SharePoint site collection of that team to make that clear. Project Corporation 2020, you see the start page here. Going back, make sure project site, uh, just to make the point clear, that's the same site collection we are reusing uh, in Teams here. And I also have a navigation point here that says leads. And here is the same web part. Why? That's basically a SharePoint framework web part created uh, with SharePoint in mind, and afterwards it was adopted also to be visible in Teams. That's a basic a template. The leads management system you can find out there in the in the PNP uh, examples. So it's not nothing that that I created or we created, and you can um, make use of it today if you just deploy and compile the example that's out there, and you see the difference then. Um, there's a small glitch because it's already a couple of months old. You see here is everything perfect in terms of CSS, so uh, the fonts are really nice. If I go back here, you see that it's it's just it's the same information, but it's not not presented in the same. Or let's say there's the, there wasn't the same love for for teams uh, back then with fonts. We could change that. We can uh, go in there and, and change the fonts, of course, for Teams are also, but it's just a little bit to make the difference. Uh, so to make clear what you can do in terms of, of fonts and uh, UI between Teams and SharePoint. So again, once in Teams, same solution in SharePoint, and that's really helpful for all of you that have experience already with, with SharePoint development. So your SharePoint framework knowledge is not lost or you don't need to uh, learn something new. You can reuse um, what you already know about um, SharePoint framework also to make that available inside of Teams. The interesting part, and we're not gonna go into details right now in opening a manifest file, but um, the Teams application for the Leads dashboard basically shows a path to a SharePoint site, to special sites and the layouts that actually points to the same web part. So SharePoint is hosting this experience in here. That is one great opportunity because if you reuse SharePoint framework, you, you, if you reuse your SharePoint framework know-how, you don't need to think about where to host your solution. 
because it's already inside of Microsoft 365. You already have a graph client in there and you can just reach out because you know you are connected and you know you are authenticated inside a Microsoft 365 service. Whereas we will see later on with your own solution that you something somehow plug into teams you need to take care of authorization um, and of hosting of course um, but that's not the case if you just use SharePoint framework um, to give you the difference let's open up another application actually uh, master plan is our um, yeah project portfolio management solution it's I think a company out of, of Germany uh, we use that to uh, plan all our uh, yeah colleagues, our, our projects, and and uh, plan how much man days we need them for different months. Um, in this demo, I can reuse the same team names that we have in in our Teams environment here. So, selecting collaboration 2020, and I get back information for April, May, June, July, August, and so on, and some values and that's just generated demo data so whenever i change something there will be new uh, numbers present but the idea is that okay i don't need to open up master plan now in a different tab i don't need to sign in to a different application i as a project manager for example uh, if i just use that head for a second i can go in there click on master plan select one of my projects let's do sap Make a quick reload and we have different data are present in there so this is one part this is the part where we actually just have the the static tab present um, what we, we use this solution internally and we have it in a, in a different way that it's not configured in the in the demo system by now but just think of okay um, if you add, add a tab to a page or, or to a team to a channel um, Let's open that for a second. You see here our um, custom solutions and it doesn't matter what, what you click there, you then enter in a configuration phase. So you have a configuration page of your tab where you say maybe, okay, for that instance in that team, I want to add a project number. I want to add a customer number, some, some basic uh, data we want to act on in our solution. Um, this gives us internally the opportunity to use this inside of every team and I don't need to select a certain team or a certain project because it automatically knows, okay, I'm living in there, someone when uh, starting or deploying the application configured my project number, one click and I have all my plan data available inside of my project. So this is, this is the idea. Um, I don't need to step out to somewhere else and just go in there and then have everything inside of my tenant. The special thing here is if I click on this yeah, globe icon over here, this pops out and let me just scroll it down a little bit. You see the same application, but you see where it's hosted. You see development, Solvion, blah, 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 blah websites.net. So actually it's an application outside of Teams that is just plugged into Teams as a tab. So the Teams part actually is the manifest file where you define your solution in terms of where should it point to, but we can also just have it surfaced in our own server. And of course I'm using now uh, Azure websites, um, but I could also deploy this uh, page to my Raspberry Pi down there, make that available uh, to the internet with some DNS magic, and then hook it up into my manifest file and make it available also inside Teams. That's not a problem. So the question where it lives, it's just a question of, okay, uh, is it Teams aware? Does it load the Teams SDK and with that the possibility to make me aware of the current user? And then I'm good to go because with the current user or to be more precise with the context of the current user, I get uh, your email address. I can then reach out to Azure Active Directory and get maybe a token to a certain application. And with that application, I can then ask the graph for uh, your profile picture, your profile data, 
make my app more personal because I know you now as a user and then go on and really, um, yeah, basically do my, my all my features, but in a way of I'm authenticated, I'm authorized, I know who I'm dealing with. Um, and again, that's what, what uh, all the vendors do. It's just a, a scaled web application that is connected to all different Teams instances. And again, this here, it's a Blaze application. So you don't need to uh, create everything in Node. Also, many examples, and if you have a Node background, please do so. Um, it's it's not like, uh, yeah, should I put it right? Uh, I don't want to get this in a, in, in a way of, okay, uh, somehow it feels like this tech decisions, are you a Microsoft guy, are you a Linux guy, are you an Apple guy, are you a Node developer, are you a Blaze developer? It's way too religious for me. It's just a tool and I like that tool better because I'm faster with that. Others may choose different, not a problem because we all can uh, surface our application inside of Teams. Um, another example of an implementation of a SharePoint web part, I think it's down there. Let me check if I click on the right button. Yep, this is here. Um, this is something we created for, for customers also um, with, yeah, the, the decision that uh, the Microsoft Planner uh, doesn't have any uh, nice uh, overview like we all used to have in, in, in SharePoint task lists with this Gantt chart. And of course, project managers love their Gantt chart, but no one actually uh, wants to pay for the whole project suite, or at least in, in my experience, a few customers that go for Microsoft project, most of them just want a project file with a Gantt chart. Uh, you can also uh, create an experience data lives inside the uh, SharePoint list. And then we, we used one of the, I think it's a Telerik uh, component, a Gantt chart in there to create those project plans. And that's actually one example that you won't find on the store, it's not out there, but a couple of our customers are really happy in, in using that just to give you an idea what use cases uh, we already implemented in terms of Teams application. Again, this was done as a, as a SharePoint framework web part and is integrated now here as a tab inside here. Um, but let's go a little bit uh, further in terms of integration. Um, let me open up a total different solution. Um, and this is just a, a web page. And for for this, um, yeah, for this demo part, let's let's just think that the 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 use case or the the idea that we want to get across is that we as a business we are a, a pizzeria. So we create pizza and pasta, and we of course we have a web page uh, with all our yeah with a great story. I think it's Lorem Ipsum with our best sellers in terms of pizzas and basically our menu. And then you can go in there and order uh, something uh, for lunch, for example. How can you order there? Um, what about you just use a bot for that? We have here uh, Giuseppe. This is uh, a bot and I'm just for the, for the sake of the time, we just have a couple of minutes left. So I just want to show you what we have there from the demo from yesterday. Uh, I can talk to Giuseppe and say, I want to order Pizza Hawaii, no problem. And I will get the information back. But just, yeah, let me try one thing. If he is up and running, because I'm not sure if he is awake today. Let's check there. Um, if he answers, we will see. Uh, by then, I think you get the idea. Um, I can, order a pizza in there and ask for uh, yeah, it's a, a nice menu for lunch or for dinner, doesn't matter. And the idea is that I have my pizza factory in here and let's get rid of everything in here for a second, clearing my tables in here. And as soon as someone orders something, I need to move to orders, uh, -da -da, clear order table, um, it would, pop into here in my orders and then I can go further if I have my orders there and then I see all my pizzas that are in order accepted, in preparing, in baking, depending on, on my different systems. So let's just create some demo orders as it looks like Giuseppe doesn't want to talk to me today. 
just to give you an idea what the solution does, I'm creating now different types of, of pizza. Um, and then in my pizza dashboard, in a couple of seconds, you will see uh, those are the orders that the kitchen basically accepted. And then it's going through preparing and baking. So um, let's switch uh, a second in the use case in terms of, okay, I don't want to order pizza now. I may be responsible to run the whole production. Um, so I can look in there and have a nice dashboard and see our current stock and see how many grams or kilos or whatsoever of ham, of flour, of yeast, of mozzarella, what is present in our stock. Um, you see here, that's just a nice tab inside of Teams. Um, let's have a look at what it looks like in the real application. And then you see the difference. The real application actually has all the Chrome around it, has all the layout in terms of navigation. And then we have the same data dashboard. And you see all the notifications here because we're running out of mozzarella, we're running out of tuna, so we can't uh, create all our pizzas. That's something for in, let's say, one or two minutes. But for now, just look at the application. It has a lot of Chrome that you want to be present in your web application, but you don't want to have the same experience inside of Teams. In Teams, you just want to have a focused view on my current uh, data in here and you see uh, mozzarella is going really down tuna is not really present anymore and the recipes in there demand that a certain amount is there that's why the notification system is started out uh yeah yelling at me but the idea is i'm reusing code that is living in a third party application so this thing this web page maybe never was planned with teams in mind it was created maybe earlier than teams existed but it's not really a problem because i can make it teams aware so i can make pages and routes inside my application that in terms of ui don't use all the navigation parts all the chrome parts uh, of the surroundings just focus on the content and these pages then are integrated into teams one thing the dashboard Another thing would be all my pizzas and I see here order accepted and in the meantime you see uh, some were prepared here, some were baking already and then now Giuseppe wants to talk to me. Okay, what happened? And then you see, okay, important. He says, oh, we ran out of, of pineapples, so we need to restock. And I'm flipping heads again. Uh, I'm not only uh, there to order a pizza, I can also go in there and say, OK, I want to restock. And you see my, my little help in the background, because I didn't write that by, the, by now, but someone, thanks Stefan, helps out in the background because I reached out to him on Signal. Um, you see the use case there. The system actually uh, yeah, is a little bit grumpy here and uh, talks about in terms of notifications, we need new stuff. And Giuseppe can in go there and say, OK, important, we need to restock. Let's restock. Let's reload that for a second. And if we go back to my dashboard, we have again different numbers in here. So we restocked uh, basically our, uh, yeah, our inventory. And the idea of that solution is that we have something what we call like, a, it's maybe not a, a good translation, but in, in German, you will say a full circle solution. I start in Teams. I talk in Teams to a third party system. Third party system does something and reaches back inside two Teams with a bot. In that case, Giuseppe just uh, notified me that we're running out of pineapples. And instead of going out there to the other third party system and click somewhere, I just push the button here. And with that, I trigger again an action in the third party system. Um, pizza is, I think, uh, an example where everyone in the call knows or, or believes uh, how or no, believes to know how this works. You, you know what you need to make a pizza. We all ordered pizzas online, so that's not the problem. Um, but just think of the possibilities if this isn't a, a pizza factory, but it's actually a real manufacturing use case, a car factory, 
really heavy machinery that's uh, calling inside of teams. And of course, it, it's not the case that, for example, uh, car producers will call inside of teams and say, hey, I'm running out of X and Y and I can't uh, continue my production. That's clear. But there are other use cases outside of the ERP world that also needs our attention. And then teams can kick in and really be of, yeah, a real digital assistant uh, connected to a third party system that then not only allows us to interact with the system, but also through the use of tabs gives us a look into the solution to make yeah better decisions and just to have a look uh, into our third party solution again without the need to switch to set third party system and to close the demo uh, we again have this here combined as a static application in terms of we have a chat and we have different tabs deployed to our chat bot as well. So the team solution is not only the chat bot, but it's also a tab, uh, in that case, actually three tabs that uh, deliver the experience we want. But if I go back over here to teams, of course, I can also just add those tabs inside my team if I want to have a few into this solution as a whole team and not only as a single person. And with that, I'm two minutes over the hour. So I don't want to be the guy that uh, takes your break away. Just let me close in that way. Reach out for questions. Thank you for attention and have a great uh, next session. I'm pretty sure it's great because I'm looking forward to see Knut myself. Thank you. That's great, Thomas. Thanks very much. Uh, you're not late, by the way. You finished well early. <laughs> uh, oh. But no, that's okay. Don't worry. We've got about uh, just less than 10 minutes, but we've got a few questions. Um, so oh, okay. hopefully, um, yeah, okay. it's it's perfect. That, so, that, 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 but my, my mistake, I thought I, I need to finish 10 minutes before. No, nah, that, that's okay. And I think, look, if you need to finish off, by all means, uh, you can show us other bits and pieces. Uh, but. I uh, just want to say now, look, you know, thanks, uh, thanks for being here at M365 UK and, uh, you know, for kind of taking uh, your time and uh, putting the effort to to be here uh, presenting this session. So uh, I'll probably just let you maybe have a couple of sips of water or something and I can probably just read out the uh, questions to you. Yeah. Um, so first question, but well, it's, it's more of a compliment. I think, uh, you know, the fact that your presentation style and, you know, I believe <laughs> you're using OBS, uh, you know, yep. Andrew Duran really loved it and I liked it too. That's that's really cool. So uh, well Thank done. You. <laughs> um, OK, so we got a question. Um, we have somebody who is a project manager with experience in software implementation and digital transformation, mostly mostly within the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, the, the the person here is looking for uh, expanding their their project management experience uh, in the cloud implementation, and particularly around Microsoft 365 and and Azure implementation. Um, what's your response to that? Because I know it is a huge platform that consists of other yep. platforms. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, it's it depends on the experience um, in the experience uh, software implementation uh, and I, I see the question before me um, I, I myself I, I started with with SharePoint and I think let's I, I don't I'm not good in, in guessing the years but let's say like five years around uh, the cloud really was also getting bigger and bigger over here in, in Austria um, I have the the privilege or or the experience to not only develop for SharePoint, but I also uh, used to install the bits and pieces. So I I dealt with load balancers and all those those great networking uh, artifacts, um, and that really helps me now to understand and to make the gap between Microsoft 365 and Azure, um, because Azure is a totally different beast in terms of velocity, in terms of speed and rate of change. Uh, Microsoft 365, uh, you're focused on the on the produ productivity uh, side of the house in terms of Microsoft, and Azure is really the the infrastructure platform. And for Azure, I'm 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 quite confident in in saying that I don't think there is a single person out there that knows everything about Azure, because it's way 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 too big. So I would focus in terms of Azure uh, in for authentication, 
so Azure Active Directory, and and for for everything you need for Microsoft 365, basically is around app services because solutions are normally hosted in app services, and then I would focus in in storage accounts because those are the artifacts you're gonna use most probably in terms of creating solutions. Um, app services, storage accounts, and maybe uh, app insights to get some really telemetry data out of your solutions. That's where, and authentication of course, those those four areas is something that I would, would uh, suggest to start in terms of Azure and forget about the idea that you can stay on top of Azure in terms of news because you won't you won't be be that that quick. Yeah, that's right. And I think also, I guess in, in terms of from a from a reading perspective, um, I know certainly there are a couple of uh, Microsoft courses, like a day course, like Microsoft 365 Fundamentals, yeah, uh, as well as Azure Fundamentals. Some of them, I mean, especially Azure Fundamentals, can be a bit heavy uh, on a technical side, but it certainly gives uh, a good breadth of what there is on offer with yep, Azure. Yep. So, and so that might be, I guess, another one to add. But no, absolutely, you're right, uh, Thomas, on that. It's just so much and there's only so much we can implement things. So uh, absolutely, with the teams especially and all the related tech around it, uh, it's kind of the, the, the hub, isn't it, for applications as well as the collaboration workloads. Good. Um, next question we've got is from Andrew McCallum, uh, who is uh, always uh, one of our regular uh, attendees here at M365 UK. Uh, so building custom apps, any tips regarding best practice, reading URL or yeah. anything to look up? Yep, I will post some URLs uh, to that re or to that reply there, or I will reply there. Um, first place to start for me, uh, PNP. PNP on GitHub and PNP in terms of samples and also in terms of uh, community calls. Um, I yeah. think they are running now three hours every every other week or, or three times in a month. So in three weeks we have something and one week is, is off, but you have different focus areas. And I know because I've, I've been on a call like four hours ago with the team, uh, they are heavily introducing teams even more than they did already the last couple of months. So it's it it pays finally off that the teams and SharePoint is both under Jeff Teeper. So the teams need to talk to each other more now and they really want to, to make sure that there are enough teams samples out there. Um, and in terms of samples, just a, a short notice, uh, please look at the date if you find a sample because Teams is out there since I think 2017. And if you find a great sample that is back from 2017, um, maybe it uses old technology to achieve something. So if you find the sample, make sure that it uses, in, especially for the bot framework stuff, uh, the latest version of bot framework. Otherwise, you would, uh, yeah, take the turn in an old uh, technology uh, area and you will need to relearn really stuff. So make sure that the stuff that you find is, is current. Um, and then I think samples are there, probably hundreds out there. It just it's, it's, it's getting to the point where there are already too many samples and we need to make sure that we have like a path through the samples. But I will, will answer with the URLs in a couple of minutes. That's great. Thanks, Thomas. And I think that's uh, that's pretty much it this uh, uh, for the questions uh, we've had. So yeah, good questions there, and uh, you know again, great session and demos there. So uh, thank you for that, Thomas. And uh, with that, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take a a break. And so what we'll do is basically I'll kind of just post the link uh, in the uh, in the in the window uh, there. But essentially, uh, essentially um, uh, the feedback link is there. So uh, you know if you can give feedback to Thomas, uh, welcome back to M365 UK. Uh, I'm Chirag Patel here, and uh, we are into our second session uh, for the uh, M365 UK today. And so once again, thank you to uh, Thomas uh, Gulles for presenting a brilliant session on Microsoft Teams apps, uh, customizations uh, and things to think about. And so uh, we now have our next uh, speaker, uh, Knut uh, Relvimo, and I've known him for many, many years. In fact, he was uh, he was the first session that I went to when I wanted to learn about Office 365. And this was like back in 20, 
12, 2013 uh, in the UK conference. So I've uh, been following him since then uh, and really kind of drives community efforts throughout uh, organizing and sharing events. But the session that he's going to present today uh, for us is, uh, is is obviously the brand new category of product from Microsoft, which is Microsoft Viva. And you're most probably already familiar with in a lot of sessions and a lot of content being going out there. Viva Connections got released just last a uh, few a uh, couple of weeks ago and so you know there's a lot going on so every perspective is unique and so we uh, are really grateful for him to be here today at uh, m365 uk to really show and tell us really about microsoft viva so uh with that um, i'll hand over to Kanud. over to you Thank you, Shirak, and good to see you, man. And I do as well remember that conference really many, many years ago uh, in London. Uh, it was uh, one of my first conference overseas, to be honest. So, uh, so, uh, and I think I had the the last session of the day or something like that. So I was just super happy that someone was in my <laughs> in my room. So I think that's why we made a special connection at that point in time because at least I had one friend in the room, you know. So so that that was good. So let me try to share my screen and uh, see if we can get these things uh, working. And I'll share screen number one. So please let me know if you can see it. Yes, I can see it and. That's yep, awesome. all good. Great, perfect. So yeah, so uh, for the people that doesn't know me as well at Chirac and to to Thomas does, uh, or Tommy as we call him, uh, I'm Knut, I'm from Norway. Uh, I have been uh, in this uh, field uh, for many, many years. And, and you know, the challenging thing is that you always need to learn something new. And you kind of, uh, even as an MVP, as myself and, and my fellow presenters here today, we are all kind of, always having to find something new to talk about you know because if not there will be someone else talking instead of myself so so you have to always kind of push ourselves to to learn new knowledge as well and and that's kind of where viva comes into play and uh, this is a totally brand new session so please share any kind of feedback that you have with me on on the topics uh, and uh, because i do want to improve this as we go uh, so uh, if it's good bad just let me know uh, this is my Twitter handle and uh, a little bit more about myself. Uh, per the, I work uh, currently as a freelance consultant for, for DAPT, uh, which is a company based in UK and Norway. Uh, before that, I worked for many, many years, as probably everybody knows, uh, for a company called Valo Intranet that has a ready to go intranet on top of uh, Microsoft 365 and SharePoint. So I helped them build their partner network uh, throughout the, the world and enjoyed traveling like crazy. But then COVID came and suddenly we couldn't travel no more and I got stuck back in, in Norway. Uh, I actually are just about to join a, a new company. Uh, this is something that will be released later on. So uh, and it will be a, a really interesting and exciting uh, opportunity for myself. So I really look forward to that uh, and I look forward to let everybody know uh, where and uh, where you will find me in the next time and it will be a big conference because it will be be uh, a vendor again as uh, Valo uh, as well is. Um, so yeah, uh, all my contact details, please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, write me an email if you need or, or just connect with me on Twitter. Uh, but Kind of uh, everybody should know that I'm from Oslo uh, as also the fast team and uh, a lot of the, the graph stuff from for Microsoft is actually happening as well in Oslo. Uh, and I do have the pleasure, the fact that I am from Oslo. I get Jeff Tieper to visit multiple times during the last four or five years. So I'm ar arranging a conference called Shape on Saturday Oslo usually. And I have two times had Jeff Tieper as my keynote speaker just because we are actually uh, in Oslo, which is pretty cool. Uh, so here are some pictures. Uh, when, it, when the world will open up again, uh, please come and visit. Uh, and if you're here, just uh, ping me up on uh, LinkedIn or, or Twitter or, or whatever, and I will be happy to, to show you around in my home city. Um, and um, I'm living a little, little bit outside of Oslo. That's just the practical things and it's uh, more affordable. Uh, everybody wants to get as much as they can from their box, you know, so uh, so yeah, uh, but to the content today uh, is like 
Uh, Microsoft just released Viva, and I'm not going to show you a lot of slides, uh, even if I have like 55 slides or something. Uh, I will uh, show you some live demos and uh, actually talk a little bit more around like why should we even consider Viva with all of the uh, the different uh, application that Microsoft is bringing in, into Viva. And, and this slide is actually really amazing in that sense because what Viva uh, has the uh, plan of doing is to connect everything inside of your organization so that you will have one place to find, find it all. And uh, with that, um, Microsoft Viva is uh, actually four different uh, products together in one. Uh, today, I'm actually going to talk a little bit briefly about Viva Insights. There's not too much stuff I can show you there uh, as of now because I don't have uh, everything set up in, in my environment yet. I don't have all the licenses needed for that, but I will show you actually the things that you can start to use to, today without uh, having any additional uh, analytic license on, on top of it. Uh, so there's a few things there that actually helps me in my day-to-day -day work that I wanted to show you. Uh, then you have the Viva Topics, and, and Viva Topics is actually out there right now. It was actually released even before the Viva Connections, and you can start to get to use Viva Topics already today. Uh, it's going to cost a little bit, and we're going to get back to that side of the things a little bit later on. Uh, the Viva Learning, uh, they're only going in public uh, preview uh, as of now in, in uh, just a couple of weeks, uh, which means that I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Viva Learning today since it's a topic that is not yet that easy to start to use. But what I can tell you about Viva Learning is that uh, this is a possibility to kind of uh, integrate, uh, for instance, LinkedIn Learning, Pluralsight, or other uh, companies that is providing uh, learning directly into your uh, Microsoft Teams environment. And uh, of course, with some of these connectors that will be possible to connect to from the Viva Learning, it's going to cost some money to do that. But if you want to, uh, for your customers or for your employees, want to set up something that doesn't cost anything, you can actually use what has been out there for some time already, the Microsoft Learning Pathway, a template, site template in SharePoint, and use that one inside of Viva Learning as well. So that is kind of the low cost uh, version of getting some Viva Learning into your organization. And then, of course, we should talk about Viva Connection. Microsoft released that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's already out there. You can already start to deploy it. Uh, I was surprised that uh, everything didn't break completely since Microsoft kind of released this on the 31st of March and everybody wanted to try to play around with it. But I'm going to talk with you a little bit about uh, what you need to do to prepare yourself for, for Viva Connections. And uh, it's not that easy as just run the script or whatever and you are there. There's so much more things that you need to think about. Like you need to think about how should that page look like? Which uh, web parts do you want to have there? And uh, what type of navigation and all this stuff do you want to have there? So that's kind of where I want to focus today to, to kind of not show you how to deploy it because that you can Google and that you can find quickly and easily. And I also have links to that inside of my uh, presentation as well. So, um, so yeah, uh, I'll just skip some slides uh, because uh, why should you deploy a uh, Viva connection? You know, like why should you even think about that? And let's start with the Viva connections and we'll get back to the other ones a little bit later on. Uh, and here there's a few slides that I need to show you because uh, Viva connection has come out right now with, with the first version of it, but uh, not everything is available there yet. And it's also only currently working inside of the web version of Teams client, or it works in a desktop client. It doesn't work in the mobile client yet. And uh, for the mobile client, it's only going to work uh, at, the, at the summertime. So, uh, and there's also a few features there that is not yet working. So that's why we, we should start to prepare for it, but we should think if it's the right time to enable it and deploy it to all of my colleagues uh, as of now. Maybe it's better to we work a little bit internally and, and then uh, prepare for releasing Viva connections more closer to the summertime uh, when we will also have the capability to, to actually operate it from the mobile app. Um, so yeah, so uh, nearly 60% of people says that they feel less connected, you know, uh, to the team after they are everybody sitting at home. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why Viva connection uh, is coming from Microsoft. And this is one of the reasons why every organization they need to 
think like how can we connect with our uh, workforce when uh, the workforce will be hybrid for as long as we can see into the future. There will be people in the office. It will be people uh, working from home. Maybe one day I will be working from the office and then tomorrow I will be work from home. And how can we make sure that everybody gets all the information and that everybody will feel that they stay connected and they are part of the company culture when we have this uh, distributed workforce as we will have in the future because of the COVID. Um, and this this is why uh, Viva Connection uh, sh are trying to help on keeping everybody connected. It's trying to help to make it easy for everybody to contribute and especially also to inspire the organization. Uh, and this is why, uh, especially when it will be available for the mobile as well, it, it, in my opinion, that it's even more important that Viva Connection will be available on the mobile client than the fact that it is available in the desktop client of Microsoft Teams because honestly saying after eight hours in Teams meetings, I'm kind of fed up in sitting in front of my computer and I would prefer to kind of digest the company information from another device, like browsing it like I browse typically news. I don't write uh, if I want to find news about some sports or how it goes uh, uh, in the football or, or, or what goes going on with COVID here in Norway. I, I really seldomly I do that on my laptop. I'm always doing that kind of browsing on my mobile device. And this is where, where I also think that organizations, they will want the users there would kind of want to digest that information in the same way from the mobile device and not necessarily from the laptop. Uh, and this is why it's even more importantly when when the Viva connection will be available in, inside of the mobile uh, Teams client. Uh, so I will show you uh, quickly uh, some demos here and First of all, uh, I will show you some, some uh, uh, automated slides that I have uh, showing this. And afterwards, I will uh, skip the PowerPoint and I will jump into showing uh, the bits and tricks about Viva Connections as it is right now. But uh, as you will see, there are some different things from the slides to where Viva Connection is actually today. So, so yeah, stay tuned. Um, so this is kind of how everything looks inside of uh, the Teams uh, client. And as you can see, over here we have the, the we have the logo. Uh, so in this case, the the my uh, my kind of uh, site is called Willy Cloud, which is kind of the co company name that I have. Uh, but pay attention to the fact that we have the logo here, which is great. We can pin it. We can control who, who in our organization should get access to this app, and we can of course start to roll it out in a small uh, group before we roll it out to everybody to get some kind of feedback through the team's admin center where we will do all those policies. Uh, but even more importantly is what you can see over here on the right side, which is called the dashboard. Uh, this functionality is not yet available, but this is actually uh, one of the key things that Microsoft is bringing with Viva Connection is that dashboard capability where we can actually go in and have a set of uh, predefined web parts that is really actual for me as a employee. So for instance, uh, I can see my tasks, I can see uh, some uh, quick polls, I can uh, see the rewards uh, and even uh, companies uh, as uh, consultancy companies or ISVs or whatever, they can actually go in and create as well their own uh, widgets or web parts or whatever we'll call them for this dashboard. So it also has an extensibility story uh, attached to it. Um, and as you can see here, this is how everything will look at on the mobile uh, version as well. So you see we have the dashboard, we have the feed and we have resources. So so again, we, we have a uh, possibility to, to digest this information in a really nice looking way uh, on the mobile device. Um, and as you can see uh, over here, we can scroll down, we will see some of the news, we can comment, we can interact with them uh, and, and we can go and click into them and uh, as you can see, do all those commenting as I have just mentioned, and we can easily navigate back and forth, uh, which makes it really, really uh, a nice way for us to feel connected and feeling part of one company, even if we are not sitting in the office every day and meeting at the coffee machine. And here again, we see the dashboard. Uh, we see that we can even interact from some of these uh, these dashboard uh, parts. Uh, I can uh, ask for the time off. I can do my tasks, I can uh, ask my leadership questions through, through the Yammer integration. 
or as I mentioned, you can build custom uh, things here that will make uh, my day to day job even easier to perform. So, so this is also why I'm thinking that these are not there yet. So in my opinion, maybe it would be better to, to wait with the rollout of uh, Viva Connections until uh, you have that uh, mobile app there, until you have the dashboard there, so that you will uh, not only put kind of a SharePoint site into Teams and that's it, because that you can actually do without Viva Connection. You can do that with creating a custom app and just put your logo there and create a custom uh, app manifest and you will actually have your SharePoint site inside of Teams. So, so the, there's not that much magic in, in Viva, Viva Connections if you think that we only put that home site, SharePoint home site into Teams. We could have done that for many months already. So for me, the goal is actually what is not there yet and what we are just waiting for being uh, should be released uh, as we can see here. And here we see also how uh, the, the the kind of the, the dashboard also have integrations with, with insights. They have integrations with learning and all these kind of things that just makes that picture complete compared to having like four different apps that it will be right now that is not that tightly integrated. And, and that's why for me again, if you should think about adoption, if you should think about your users and, and how they should consume and digest all this, it would be better and preferable to actually wait until uh, Viva Connection is more mature than it is right now. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't start, you know, because if you don't have a home site in SharePoint already, you should create one. If you don't have a kind of the global navigation in, 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 in the home site, you should start to think about that because those things will anyways you need to have later on. You need to think about like what do we want to have as part of that home site? Like what kind of impression do we want to give our uh, employees and this this different type of things. And this is where kind of the knowledge about the intranet is coming into place because whatever you uh, was typically having in an intranet, that's the things that you should put in your SharePoint home site, like from the navigation to, to the different news roll-ups that you want to have, the company feed, uh, the possibility to maybe interact with the employees or having uh, the microblog functionality that typically now is uh, delivered by Yammer, uh, and, and these kind of things is, is what we really need to, to think about. And here we see how the dashboard as well is, is working uh, on, on the mobile phone and uh, having all the capabilities that we, we just really need to have uh, on the mobile phone so we can really easily do our work from, from the mobile phone, uh, basically. So, uh, so that is kind of um, the Viva connection, how it will be in, in the future. But before I kind of talk a little bit about pitfalls, downfalls, or uh, how to get this installed. Let's just jump and, and see how this one can, can look like. And I have a few uh, installations here where, which I want to, to show, uh, and we can take them, them one by one. Uh, so for instance, um, if I go here, this is my uh, environment where we have set up uh, Viva connections. Uh, you see that we have the logo uh, working nicely, beautifully over here, and this is the reason why I show this one, uh, because I also have a, a demo environment that is provisioned up uh, from the demos Microsoft.com, uh, where the logo does actually not work that, that well. Uh, but here you see my point exactly here. We have taken the site that we have in, inside of SharePoint, uh, and we have taken this site and, and make this uh, the SharePoint home site, uh, and any kind of communication site you can make into a SharePoint home site. So, so that uh, the only requirement is that it's a communication, modern communication site, and then you can create it into a home site. The other thing that we have done here is of course to, to kind of create uh, the look and feel. We have uh, figuring out like what type of message do we want to have on the landing page, because this is the landing page of our intranet, so to say, uh, and this is uh, what we want people to see when they come in and whether we want them to navigate. And we can see that we also have a mega menu over here where we can go and kind of go deeper into the different type of um, departments or different type of information that we want to share with, with our colleagues. Uh, you can also see that in this particular environment, I also have the right uh, application bar uh, or the SharePoint app bar as it's called. Uh, that is a key part of Viva Connections because this one will actually also come inside of the inside of the Viva Connection inside of Teams. 
but due to some uh, issues, Microsoft decided to stop the rollout of, of, Viva, uh, of the uh, SharePoint app bar, which means that a lot of tenants doesn't have this one yet, and you don't have any option to go in and configure it in the tenants where it already is, and it doesn't show up inside of the, the inside of your team's and environment, as you can see from, from here. So, so there's a, a lot of these things that we, we really need to, to look into, and uh, I think my screen just froze, so give it a break, and I hope I will be back in a few seconds here. Um, I have a, such a perfect uh, web camera that kind of stops to work after some time, so uh, it worked all the day today until now when it had to work. So I uh, just give a few seconds and, and my screen should be back up and, and running again. So so yeah, here we are. That's what we do when we have live demos and, and all this kind of thing. So uh, I do hope that you can still see my screen if, if you cannot see my face no more. Um, so let's see, I will just um, take off the camera since it anyways doesn't work right now. Um, so yeah, so, so do, uh, I hope you can still see my screen and Shirak, if not, just uh, tell me. Um, but, but here you can see that uh, we have this one uh, version of uh, the site where we have a different set of web parts. We are using the right column where we have some events. And we have uh, the news web part over here where we, uh, where we have the one to three view. Of course, here we can kind of change the view if you want. We have a big uh, big place all the, over here to kind of explain uh, what hybrid work and all these thing, kind of things is all about. Uh, we have a recent document uh, web part here on the right side, and we have some nice big icons or buttons to click here to kind of go deeper into the different type of things, like for instance, a document hub, like everything about COVID or, or the training portal. Uh, the training portal is actually the learning pathway portal, and, and this is the, the, the the uh, the thing that you can set up uh, for your organization for Viva Learning later on. You can kind of connect the Viva Learning as well to the learning pathways. So it's a really controlled way where you can actually control yourself, the resources and the training material that you want to uh, roll out to your employees. If you don't want to kind of uh, pay for uh, subscription services like uh, Plural Site or Microsoft uh, LinkedIn Learning and, and these kind of things. So there's a few options there uh, and we will get back to those later on. I can come back and do another uh, another webinar when, when the Viva Learning will be out uh, and focus uh, only on that one. Um, if you go back here, uh, you can see that everything is here nicely. You will always go in and find uh, your application here. You can go in here, right click and unpin it as you can see now. Uh, or uh, you can uh, also take a look at uh, right now. We can take a look at the insights application because the insights application is the Viva insights. So, for instance, uh, uh, one thing that you should pay attention to here is that, um, for instance, the uh, the um, Viva uh, connection is uh, a personalized application, so you will not find that one inside of the team store. It is, uh, as also Tommy mentioned before uh, in his session, so this is kind of the personalized application that is inside of your own uh, environment, and uh, it's not in, uh, in, in the team's store. But for instance, if I want to search for Viva here, you can see that if I search for Viva... Hi, for, sorry. Yeah, Sorry to interrupt. I think your screen is frozen as well. So okay, that's what I uh, Yeah, I can uh, unshare it and share it again. Thank you yeah. so much. Shirak. No worries. So, uh, I will uh, backtrack a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, uh, and I hope you can see it now again. That's good. Brilliant. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, is that for instance, if I go to my uh, my team's environment here. Uh, right now, you can see that I detach uh, the um, hub, as it's called, my Viva connections from my pinned applications here on the left side. So now I kind of pinned it again, and you can see that it's here uh, in the Teams admin center. We can actually choose uh, the priority of these ones, and I will see if I have time to show you that in a few few moments later on, uh, how you can actually put it on the, on the top for all of your users and how you can pin it there for, for your user, making sure that this is the default application. Uh, but from the inside perspective, as you can see here, it comes up in recent because I added it before. But if you go into more apps, you will see that uh, Hub, which is actually the Viva connection, is actually a personalized app and is not present in the team store. Uh, but the cool thing here is that if I will search for Viva, 
the insights application doesn't show up, which is kind of confusing. So you need to know that when you want to kind of find the uh, insights application, you just need to search for insights. And there it is. And uh, it's written here, Microsoft Viva Insights. So it's kind of not optimal that it, it doesn't show up. So uh, I can go here and I can click open uh, because I have added it before. If not, it will be written added there. And, and this is kind of how that one looks like. I will just show you this view from, from another environment I have because here it's uh, nothing that shows up, which is makes it kind of not that interesting to show. Uh, but if I will go over here to, to my other uh, environment, you will see that here I can see people that I recently interacted with. And as well, if I will uh, um, be kind of inside of an environment where uh, I, I didn't have a meeting with a colleague or if I'm a boss and didn't have a meeting with one of my uh, staff, I will get uh, the question as well here to actually book a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one of my colleagues as well. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, I can go here and I can also do like one-on-one -on -one reminders. I can do weekly. There's all these reminders that is possible to, to set here as well. Uh, I can also go in here and pin this one. Uh, so it will be actually put here on the top. So now I have it here and you can also go in and just click done. And, and then this one is uh, no more anymore there. Uh, and also if you are invited to uh, meetings and you forgot to reply with uh, an RFSP on them, like for instance, a uh, tentative or decline or accept, uh, the meetings that you haven't replied to will also show up here, which is actually really helpful because I tend to forget that because if I have a meeting and I don't uh, say no to the meeting, it's automatically how I, how I work. I already automatically accepted it, you know, because if not, I will let the person know that I cannot uh, join. So, so, uh, but with, with uh, Viva Insights, I get the capability to actually come in and reply automatically and quickly here, and I get an overview of the meetings that I did not reply to. Even more importantly is the other tab that you can see here, which is all about protected time. And usually here you will have a couple of more tabs as well. So for instance, if we will go here, uh, and this is also something I just wanted to show you uh, later on. So let's just keep this one. If you will just Google the Viva Insights like this, there's so many uh, great, um, great uh, sources of information from Microsoft. And here you see is Microsoft Viva Insight that needs also the um, the different type of uh, licenses in the back end to to get those personal insights because uh, manage and leader insights those needs that workplace analytics to to be able to to be there uh, which is uh, required to have and i don't have those in, in my uh, tenants because uh, it's my demo tenants and there are not too many people there so it's limited what you can get from this but but there are two, two more that you can go in and you can really go in and look into like the well-being of, of your co uh, company. You can go in and see like uh, how much time is spent on different type of things like meetings and all this kind of thing. So it it's can be a really interesting tool also for the, the manager and the leaders and all these kind of things. And everything, of course, is uh, uh, also really taken care of. Um, Kind of the importance of privacy and all these kind of things as, as everything with, with Microsoft Viva. Um, but as you can see here, we have the protect time or the focus time because this is something that we, everybody forget, you know, that uh, sometimes they forget to block like some time to focus, like maybe I need to study something, maybe I need to learn something more, something new. Uh, and here quickly from Viva Insights, I can go in and uh, schedule a focus time for myself. So for instance, if I want to have a focus time, I can just go here to book the time. And now this time is actually in my calendar over here uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, coming up here shortly. I think it's behind this one. So as you can see here, we have it there uh, and you can also go and uh, do more of those things later uh, and you can remove it from within here as well. So if you see here, focus time tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, I can also remove it. So it keeps track of all those focus times from within here. Uh, and as you saw now, when I jump to, for instance, Teams here, it disappeared from my uh, left navigation. And the reason because of that was that I did not go in and pin it. 
to my left now. So every user, if this haven't been pinned automatically from uh, your uh, kind of IT administrators, you can pin it yourself. So it will always pop up here in the left navigation to make it easier. What we cannot do as a user yet is we cannot kind of control myself uh, the order here. So this is something that we have to do through the, the, the policies inside of uh, Teams Admin Center, as I mentioned before as well. So, but but this is kind of the, the, the Viva Insights uh, and kind of the functionality if not to look at the analytic sites and the well-being side of it. Uh, but with, with um, Insights, I uh, started to use it. Uh, and even without Insights, for me, just this stay connected and the protected time is a good enough reason to actually use it for my, my own sake, just to be able to work more productively uh, for, for myself. Uh, and then if you go back to um, look at the Viva connections, um, let's see over here, we have here, and this is a demo site that is set up by Microsoft. And remember I mentioned that the logo is wrong, um, because here you see that the logo doesn't come true properly. Uh, and that's why I wanted to show you that. Uh, make sure that you do that when you are deploying it uh, yourself, that you have a, a logo that is a monochrome uh, logo uh, so that it will work. And also make sure that it uses the full 32 by 32 pixels uh, so that it will show really nice here. Another thing uh, and a best practice advice is the naming of your uh, Viva connection app or how to call it. Because you can see here, uh, this is called the landing. What happens then is that you have the landing uh, dot 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 compared to the landing. So think uh, about short naming conventions here so that you will actually have uh, have the full name here uh, visible. Uh, so it will be actually more nice looking for your employees. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we have the header uh, we can go in and see, look at the mega menu. Uh, we can click one of them and then of course we will navigate to, to the page. Uh, again, you see that here is a SharePoint site that has been uh, set up as the home site and you need really to think through how you want to build that. I really love to have the right navigation here uh, and then to have typically news on the top and, and then some kind of uh, other type of content depending on what you want to, to have in your own uh, uh, intranet. Uh, I do know that a lot of companies, even if you are using Teams, even if you are using uh, uh, kind of commenting on, on, on the pages uh, in, inside of your SharePoint environment, a lot of companies actually do like still to use Yammer conversations for some uh, to some extent. And especially now with the, with the new Yammer web parts and everything, it might be still a good idea to revisit if you should use Yammer or not. And you also get the Yammer app here called Communities. Uh, as part of the team's environment. So in some ways you can do a little bit more, enough, uh, like a little bit more, uh, how to call it, like not so uh, uh, strict things uh, you can put in, in Yammer. For instance, one, one way to look at Yammer would be like, right now we need one place to create like vibes in the organization because everybody is sitting and working uh, at home. Uh, we, we don't meet at a coffee machine no more. We don't interact that much with our colleagues. And actually uh, Yammer uh, could be used for that because you could actually, uh, if someone is going for a walk outside or if somebody finally is visiting the office or visiting the factory or something like that, you could actually in Yammer post a picture or a video and then get other people to kind of interact with that, kind of creating a little bit the social vibe that is missing in a lot of organizations right now. We also see that this organization, they wanted to have the feeder here to also show kind of the, the outside of the company feed to, to the employees, which is I think is a really good best practice uh, advice. And you see again uh, that we have some navigation to different type of sites here and also the type of recent documents uh, and these things that we have here. Um, so, so that is kind of the, the Viva connections, but if I will go right now, and I'm logged in with my admin account here. So uh, if I will go, uh, actually not the admin account, um, but I will, let's see, let's go to the SharePoint side of things. Here we find admin, it's hidden by some reasons inside of Teams, I remember. So, so if you go here to, to the admin center, uh, we, so we can go to Teams admin and inside of the Teams admin interface, 
this is where we will we need to go to kind of deploy the Viva connection application itself. This is where we need to go and, and do that. Uh, I will skip the tour uh, and here we can go and look at the team's applications. We have the managed apps here. Just as Tommy showed a little bit earlier, so I will not go into too much details here, but you see that here we have all our applications. But what we want to look at right now is our permission policies uh, and we want to go and look at the setup policies. So for instance, here we have our setup policy is global. Uh, if you go in and look at this one, we will see that we have the landing as, as an app here. Uh, so, so this one is uh, installed automatically for us. So it will show up to for all the users. And then you can also go here and see that the app is also here. Uh, and here is where we can actually move it up. So it will be pinned on the top of our navigation as well if we want to do that. Uh, we also can go to the permission policies and the permission policies is where we will choose who should be actually seeing this application, uh, seeing our, um, our, how to call it, seeing our, and now I went wrong, sorry about that, to see who should actually have access to it. And you can go here, create a custom one. Typically that's what we want to do if you want to test it out for a small set of users. And then you can go to manage user here afterwards and you can add the people that should be getting this uh, application uh, inside of Teams. So, but first you will then have to create a custom one and then just add the users afterwards. So, so yeah, we can just do that for quickly right now um, and uh, just call this one M365 UK. We have it here. We can say that are oh, you allowed to uh, do custom apps, etc., like this, and then we can. Uh, add the users and all these things to, to the application here. Uh, so that is really briefly and all this uh, you can find as well good documentation on uh, if you uh, look at the internet and I have a few links in my slide deck as well uh, and the slide deck will be provided afterwards to how to do this yourself. Um, as I can go back to my SharePoint here, you can see that when you want to design this one, you will just do that as you design any kind of SharePoint page. So you uh, just add the web parts you want to have on your page and you can really go in here and add all the web parts just as you are used to because in the end this is just a SharePoint communication site that is actually just set as the home site in your environment. So, so this is why I'm telling that you need to kind of have a little bit of vision to how you want your Viva connection to look like, what type of navigation do we want to have, uh, what do you want to have on the landing page? Uh, and if you want some UI um, kind of uh, Im impressions or UI help, uh, the lookbook of uh, Microsoft would be the right place to go uh, for now, but later Microsoft will also provide easy ways to deploy uh, the different look and feel within the SharePoint and within kind of the gear icon here, which, which will be really helpful. But, but right now the best place to to do this is just to go to the lookbook of Microsoft and I can provide that link as well. Uh, let's just quickly jump back to my slides and um, as I uh, I will not go through this one but uh, very deeply but this is kind of where we come in and uh, we see kind of the prerequisites you know of how to deploy the Viva connection. So um, First of all, as I mentioned, you need to create a company-wide portal. You should register it as a home site. The global navigation is not yet there. It's going to be later out. Um, you need to uh, have a 192 uh, on 192 pixel color icon uh, for the app catalog. And then you need to have a 32 on 32 pixel monochrome icon for the app bar. It has to be monochrome and uh, you should use the full 32 pixels. So you should actually uh, have it all the way out in the edges to make it as good as possible. So this is something you just need to try and fail a little bit with uh, and we have all been doing that. Um, and then um, uh, references, I will just skip, you will get those later. But the last few minutes I want to spend on, on, on Viva Topics because as I mentioned already, Viva Topics is already out. But what you need to be aware of is that Viva Topics is going to cost you. So uh, currently it's around four pounds per user uh, to that should use the Viva Topics. You can of course control 
who has access to this uh, uh, topic site. And by this, not everybody in the organization will get access to it. But but kind of the, the main reason be behind this is that people should kind of uh, find the information that much easier. So you don't need to search for it. You don't need to kind of um, spend too much time to find information like every company is struggling with right now. And a lot of company has invested a lot of money in this already. Um, so what kind of culture uh, of knowledge sharing does your company have? You know, because here there's a lot of different ways. Uh, some uh, some companies, they are connected. So you kind of, you have a knowledge management portal maybe already. Maybe you have some uh, champions inside of your organization that is sharing the knowledge. Uh, and other ones might uh, just have uh, people that is uh, have some stakeholders that is kind of doing most of the uh, topics, uh, but it's not that many people that does that. So you need to kind of ad identify those things. But you know the most important thing with with Viva topics or any kind of stuff that is similar is that, um, for instance, if you will try to do this in a demo tenant, for instance, you are not going to be able to do that because you need a lot of content to be able. Uh, to use Viva topics. Uh, so there's, uh, you need to have uh, at least 10,000 uh, files or whatever, or pages inside of SharePoint uh, or, or documents. You need to have uh, a lot, a lot of content there. Uh, and you also need to have active people using it uh, because here the artificial intelligence will actually come in and uh, go and um, scan everything and if you don't have no activity they have nothing to scan if you don't have no content you have nothing to scan uh, and this is why kind of the big question is like does this scale to the largest customers uh, eventually yes of course they will um, is it suitable for a small business it might be if you have a lot of content and you work with a lot of content uh, is it suitable for your personal tenant uh, like demo tenant it's not you're not going to get no content there um, and also Importantly, you should know what you don't want to include because it's a knowledge sharing system. So here it's going to scan things, but you're only going to see things that you have permissions to see uh, because uh, you will never see things that you have no permission to see. So it's a little bit kind of like the, the delve and the graph, you know, that uh, it's using the, the SharePoint uh, permissions and reading from there. So you should never see things that you don't have permission to see. Uh, but still, it might be uh, like a legal site or an HR site that you for sure don't want people to find uh, that you need really to then uh, kind of make sure that doesn't show up when you are uh, going into Viva topics and you can configure that so that it will not scan a set of sites, for instance. Um, I will actually not go into those things. I will show it to you instead because we only have, I think, seven minutes left. Um, that's why I skipped also too much about learning because it's so many. You, we can spend like one hour on each of these topics, you know, and, um, and let's just go now to look a little bit around uh, the topic side of things. So first of all, when you are installing Viva topics, you are getting a site that will have all of your uh, topics uh, inside of it because every topic will have a page uh, and uh, as you can see here, uh, I have my digital service initiative and um, here I can go in and I see that uh, I can pin people because I can go in here and edit this page. So for instance here I can go in and this is a topic that I have, digital service initiative. It has an alternative name so uh, that I, I can use so I can find it also by the alternative name. And here is kind of the short description and I can pin different type of people here. Uh, that should be people that are knowing this topic. Uh, and then you can see that we have a set of pin files and pages, but also the AI are actually finding suggested files and pages. So as a con content um, uh, or as a kind of Viva topics moderator or how to call it, I can go here and pin those uh, topics and then they will be here in the pin files and pages instead. But all the time new content will come here if people will add new pages and all these kind of things. And it's the same for related sites is also finding those. We can also go in and actually connect the topics to another topic for because maybe the topics are related. Uh, for instance, here I could have created an M365 topic and I can go here and create this as a new one. And M365 UK was a blast. 
uh, and I can create this topic. And now this uh, will be connected together, uh, which you can see that uh, we can really build those topic maps, uh, uh, which will help our employees to find topic that is related and to find content that is important for them and will be able for them to kind of uh, not spend too much time searching for the content. Um, so if I will now go to um, my site that is called operations, it should be. Uh, so let's just, uh, and actually one thing I can show you before is that if I go here to, to the manage topic page, we can have it open up uh, over here. You will see that for instance, uh, uh, what is happening here is that when you are installing it, it will scan your uh, topics and you will see here that this is all the topics that is in my environment and you will see an impression. So that means that how much this has been mentioned, a little bit like Google, you know, and the more it's been mentioned, the higher impression it has, which means that you should consider creating a topic page for that. Uh, so that means that, for instance, if I wanted to take this European expansion and make this into uh, a topic that people we will, uh, we will kind of use, then I will just click confirm here. And now it will be coming over in the confirm list. And of course, from the confirm list, you have to go in and publish it. And here, different people has different permissions and can do things. So, uh, but here you will see that this is kind of, when I clicked it, you will see this is kind of how that topic card will show up in, in SharePoint search and in SharePoint pages. Right now, this will also later on be visible and available inside of Teams. And so if someone will write uh, inside the chat of teams like DC 1000, uh, we will get this topic card as you can see here. Inside of teams, if I will search for it, I will get the same topic card and we will see the different resources and everything from there. And I can click here to view the details and I will go into my topic center where we will find all this information uh, as well. Uh, so that is quickly, briefly about um, the Viva topics. Uh, but one thing that I can show you as well, if I find my page that is open before we will close for a couple of questions maybe, uh, is that um, when it comes to, to Viva topics, you can also go in and configure who has access to this. So for instance, if I will go here, uh, and actually now I'm with the wrong profile, so let me just go and be with the correct profile. Uh, so here you see we have the topic trial set up, uh, but you need to go actually under here and find uh, under the setup. Um, you should go and find what is uh, called files. Down here, you will see that we have what is called uh, files and content. And here we have connect people to, to knowledge. This is actually how you can go in and configure the Viva topics afterwards. And I will just need a, yeah, there's a wizard when you set it up the first time where you set all those things. But here you can see that I can go in and look at the topic experiences. So for instance, if I want to not scan everything, I can go here and do that. So you see here, it has uh, only selected sites from a CSV file. But if I wanted to scan everything, I will just do this one, or I can do everything except the selected sites. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Uh, also, we can see that we can go in and select some topics that we don't want to uh, scan. For instance, maybe that's a sensitive topics that we don't want to have here. Uh, and of course, here you see that changes here are only available after 24 hours. It's actually going to take like two to three weeks for Viva to topics to scan your environment. So after you set it up, don't expect things to show up immediately. It's going to take time before everything gets scanned. Uh, and you can also see here that the topic visibility is something that you need to pay attention to because when you start to roll this out, you want to select just a selected few first, either from the security group or selected people, or you need to be paying attention here if you don't want to pay a license for everyone in your organization. Uh, and then permissions is the same, who can create and edit topics. So here you will see that everyone in my organization can do it. This is always kind of maybe not how we want it. You will probably want to have only selected uh, people or security groups uh, and uh, the same for the managed. And here you will see the link to my topic center and all these things are kind of configurable from within here. Uh, so that was kind of a little bit into the topics and there's so much more uh, to cover there, uh, but I do have uh, all my slides with all the resources. I will share those. So uh, this was kind of a introduction to that and uh, yeah let's uh, let's uh
play around with it together. And if you have questions, feel free to, to reach out. And Shirak, maybe we have some questions right now. Great stuff. Thanks, Knut. That was a great session. Really, uh, really kind of, you know, nice and neat to fit all the content, uh, at least the four areas of Microsoft Viva into one hour or even less than that. So great job. Thanks once again. Um, yeah, we got uh, we got a question and we'll probably just give a couple of minutes uh, for uh, anybody who wants to uh, add more questions. So yeah, um, on the subject of Viva topics, uh, there was just more of a clarification really to say that it's is it more like delve if you like the topics, the topic cards you have? Uh, I think uh, it's kind of uh, uh, Delve 2.0, if you would ask me, you know, it's like uh, it's a better way of uh, making Delve than how Delve was before, because uh, you know what, uh, Delve was a good idea, but I think the UI was not the best from, from how Microsoft built that. Uh, but but that has, it has nothing to do with Delve. So the only reason why I mentioned Delve is that a lot of organization was really scared to start to use Delve because there was like seeing content there that they didn't expect to see there. But that was not the fault of Delve, that was the fault of uh, permission being set by the uh, administrators or the people using it in the organization because uh, Delve only showed stuff that you have access to. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it's the same with, with, with Viva Topics is that you will actually understand and see if you did something wrong with your SharePoint permissions, because then suddenly stuff will start to show up uh, in Viva topics. Uh, so, uh, but again, you need to uh, create your topics. You can create them manually, or you can wait for kind of uh, uh, the AI to scan them and suggest them, as I just showed really briefly. And anyways, people has to go in and uh, confirm them and uh, publish them. Uh, the topics are not going to be shown otherwise, but uh, content that uh, is uh, uh, somehow connected with uh, with the, the topics, they will show up automatically based on your permissions. Sure, now that, that makes sense. And I think like you say, I mean, Delve kind of survive, is surviving for the last five, six years anyway. So, uh, you know, still great personalized content, but uh, I think, yeah, Viva is just great. I think, uh, and also I think what's important is the fact that, you know, those organizations who are coming straight into teams, they can almost even to an extent forget about what SharePoint and how SharePoint work because everything just comes into into teams, right? And I think um, that is kind of the plan of Microsoft, you know, because there's a lot of people that has a lot of baggage when it comes to SharePoint, you know, like uh, there's a lot of hate and love for SharePoint, uh, basically <laughs> in, 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 in the community and, in, in, and, and so on. And um, uh, in some ways, uh, Teams is just using SharePoint as a storage, you know, and uh, there's necessarily you don't need to know that it is stored in, in SharePoint. And when mm -hmm. we will see how those Viva topics cards are actually uh, going to show up in, in in teams that's when it makes sense much more than how it is inside of SharePoint you know mm -hmm. because uh, for instance if I'm in the chat with you Shirak I will write like a topic say M365 UK and that is a topic card we have we will see everything from within that chat so I don't even need to leave the context of that chat to find all the knowledge that I want to 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 learn and understand about M365 UK and that's when actually I think topics will really come in place when it will integrate into your team chats, into your team channels and, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, instead of me searching for content is that the content will find me as long as we have configured those topics properly. Uh, my only big concern with Viva topics is the license model, which is kind of steam to say the least. So if you are a company of uh, of 100 uh, users, you have to pay like 400 pounds per month for mm -hmm. using Viva Topics. That's not so bad, but if you are then suddenly 10,000 employees, it's going to be kind of 40,000 pounds a month, which I don't think nobody wants to pay. Uh, yeah, it depends so, on the so, revenue, right? How much how much revenue they, they, they're generating and... <laughs> always, always, of course, if you have enough money, price doesn't matter. Uh, but, but content but, but, yeah. thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so, but I, I do hope that Microsoft will take some some general feedback on, on the pricing, and probably they will. Uh, uh, but you know, if you look at, of course, Viva Topics compared to some other solutions out there that has been built by vendors and these kind of things, and maybe the price is not that high, mm. considering that is 
uh, four pounds per user. And Peter saw that knowledge management systems out there, at least they cost like one to two pounds per user and maybe even more. Uh, and one thing that we should know for sure is that there's nobody that knows uh, you and the files and uh, the stuff that you are working on better than Microsoft, since they kind of have all that knowledge with with the graph and 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 uh, all the things that they are kind of the signals that they are collecting, like from from each user that is using the M365 platform. Yeah, no, no, absolutely right. And I think it is interesting, you know, the, the remainder of the year and and the next few years. Certainly, I think. Uh, the whole area of employee engagement experiences, how that surfaces. and uh, But absolutely, I think it's anything to get started, getting access to the content is, is the key. And I think, you know, it's great to see Viva is kind of here and to help us get started. But I've got to, uh, I'm, you know, I'd love to talk more about it, but I think we'll have to probably wrap up uh, just yeah. there, I think. Uh, but again, look, you know, I think, Big thanks to you uh, for uh, being here with us today, uh, Knut, and you know taking out your time and and, and effort to be uh, to put into the presentation. So really appreciate, and uh, and I really hope to see you and Tommy as well, uh, some point uh, later uh, in, at some community conferences, as well as uh, many of our attendees and and a lot of community folks out there. So thanks for me and uh, for the Thank attendee. You. Uh, also, thanks to you as well for tuning in and hopefully you found the two sessions very useful uh, and some great questions there as well. And I've also posted the um, the feedback link as well. So please do provide uh, feedback for both the sessions uh, because that really helps uh, us to at least even tailor and tweak uh, the presentations as well. So uh, only about four or five questions, uh, very short form. So that's in the in the chat window there. And also, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we do have a uh, next event coming up uh, in the uh, uh, next month on the 19th of May. And so that's again, you know, a, a very good uh, topic areas to, to look out for. So we're really looking at uh, OneDrive, uh, everything and anything about OneDrive. And that's, that session has been presented so many times by hands. And every time when I watch or tune in, it's just so interesting to watch and learn and think. So bring your questions for that. Uh, but also the great uh, session as well from the uh, the PNP uh, community members as well, who's looking after uh, the SharePoint teams, the areas sort of thing. So again, you know, some of you may be already aware of that because they do regular uh, calls. Uh, so that's going to be a session really about how you uh, as end user organizations or even consulting organizations get involved in, in enriching and building your solutions using uh, all the, the ready-made code that's available uh, and with very little code if you like. But again, you know, um, I'll let them uh, take care of that. Um, but other than that, I think I uh, just want to say a big thanks to everyone and uh, links are there on Friday. Uh, uh, look out for the M365 UK uh, YouTube channel. So the uh, session will be uh, made available and the slides. And uh, once again, my thanks to Tommy and Knut for being here today. And uh, for everyone, be safe and stay well. Thanks. <laughs>